Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Chanel sues again and wins again. They have been on a winning streak, this time in Europe, not in America. Of course, we're worried. Who lost? The big man? The little man? Let's find out together. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also follow me on um, you can also follow me on uh, Patreon. Super Dacob, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun in the chats. Um, Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So, LuxuryTribune.com is reporting about Chanel winning its lawsuit against Jonak, or because it's a French brand, maybe they pronounce it as Yonak or Jonak. It's spelled J-O-N-A-K. In a ruling landed down on October 16th, 2024, the French courts fined shoe brand Jonak for 180,000 euro. And here you see the difference between America and Europe. For European standards, 180,000 euro is a huge deal. In America, it would have been a, a few, a couple million dollars. But because it's Europe, it's 180,000 euro, which is like around about $190,000. Uh, the sums are lower in Europe when it comes to these sorts of infringements. You know, that that's also one of the reasons why in Europe people don't sue so easily. But here we go. They have been awarded €180,000 for, par for parasitism on Chanel's famous slingbacks model. Now, let me show you a picture. Thumb up this video while you're at it, you guys. Let's get to 100,000 subbies. We're almost there. It's hard in the, mid in the Middle Ages. We're living in these medieval times at the moment, you understand. It's really hard to reach those numbers. Humanity has been decimated. Where we went back in time. But we're trying to reach 100K. Subscribe. Let me show you pictures. So this is the Chanel sling bag that we have all been accustomed to, more or less. If you're into fashion, you kind of know. Now, even though this sling bag has not always been the uh, shape of the Chanel sling bag, the original first one had a kitten heel. Uh, but uh, throughout the decades, it has morphed and evolved in different tweaks and styles, you know, and the current version of the classic Chanel sling bag will have a logo on the side of the heel and uh, it will have a thicker heel like you see there. It wasn't always this I identical shape, but the infamous Chanel sling bag is infamous because of its two-tone shoe color, not just beige and black. They would also do white and black. They even have ton sur ton. Sometimes uh, you can even find sling bags that are black on black where the tip is either satin or tweed or uh, in this case gros grand and then the rest of the shoe body is leather. So even though they're both black, just because they're two different materials, they will reflect light differently. So there's a lot of different sling bags. But now Chanel has basically sued in French court the French brand uh, Jonac or Yonac and was awarded 180,000 euro. Emotion Engine says, are those the Jonak brothers? <laughs> I see what you did there. Well, no, the company Jonak has apparently been around since the 60s. So it's not your random brand that just now kind of came to the market and is copying Chanel shoes. They've been around since the 60s. So technically, they've been around since the time when Coco Chanel herself was alive. And uh, the Paris Court of Appeal has delivered its verdict. Jonak is guilty of unfair competition against luxury giant Chanel, the shoe brand owned by owned for three generations by the Nakam family, is guilty of parasitism. Oh, those parasites. Although these days, you know, one it begs the question, who's the real parasite here? Chanel? Or this little family-owned brand. 
Chanel for other reasons, of course. Of course. Allegedly. Only allegedly. We're just asking here. This particular type of infringement consists of exploiting another company's reputation and brand identity to gain an, adva an advantage. Certain models of Jonac pumps are said to be too similar to Chanel's iconic creations. And here they talk about the Dapu pumps. Let me show you. Let me show you the product that Chanel has been suing against. You see the brand here, Jonac? This is Jonac's version of the slingback. It has a little, um, uh, what you might call it. Uh, Kev says, I've seen worse dupes from Zara. It has a little uh, lock here, a little belt. Uh, the Chanel version doesn't. The Chanel version has a little bit of a kind of a rubberized leather strap in the back. And you can see maybe they're not really done as well, because here you can see that leather going in there, probably glued. We don't know. But Emotion Engine says, those are kind of cute, very 1930s. Well, as, well, the two tones didn't really exist in the 30s like this yet. They were created in the 50s. Robbie says, what is the point of suing? These dupes exist in every nook and cranny of the shoe biz, says Robbie Lorraine. I agree, but here you go. This is really interesting how Chanel went after them and won in France. The Dafu or the Dapu pumps offered by the French shoe brand founded in Paris in 1964 have too many details in common with the slingback pumps. I'm reading the article. The design of the straps and the two-tone black and beige color are strongly reminiscent of those used by the Rue Cambon House. The dispute began in May of 2020, so that's four years ago, more than four years ago, when Chanel served formal notice on Jonac, accusing it of having marketed models imitating the characteristics of six of its two-tone creations from the spring-summer 2020 collection. The court ruled that Jonac should pay a penalty of 180,000 euro, 150,000 euro for the economic damage caused to the luxury house. So, of the 180,000 euro, 150,000 are for economic damages caused to the luxury house, and the other 30,000 euro are to compensate for moral prejudice. In addition to this fine, Jonac is required to withdraw the models concerned from the market within one month. If Jonac fails to comply with this requirement, the company will be required to pay a penalty of 1,000 euro per day of delay. The French courts have thus reaffirmed the importance of intellectual property rights in protecting creations and brands of excellence. So they're protecting brands of excellence. Are they protecting the small person, though? I have seen no evidence of such motions. Imitations are becoming increasingly common in the luxury sector. The line between imitation and counterfeit is now very thin with this lawsuit outcome especially since the phenomenon of dupes has gained prominence on social networks led by TikTok. Dupes are products that are strongly inspired by top-of-the-range items, but manufactured by mainstream brands. Dupe is now one of the most popular words on the TikTok network, with almost 9 billion hits. So the author of the article, which is Eva Morletto, quotes Coco Chanel and says, Coco Chanel used to say, being copied is the price of success. Well, Coco said a lot of things. Um, but yes, she, in one of her uh, biographies, she did, uh, she was quoted to have said that when she saw Chanel bags and little black jackets being copied and sold on the streets of Paris, she was thrilled, she said, because that meant that she finally made it in 
to popular culture. She called them my little Chanel's. Now, whether or not she legally went after these, we don't know. But I'm just saying, interesting. So anyway, uh, it would seem that today, more than ever, this is the case that being copied is the price of success. According to Morning Consult, 31% of American consumers have already bought dupes. A report by Y Pulse at the end of last year, 2023, found that two-thirds of Europeans aged between 13 and 39 members of generations Z and millennials already own at least one dupe. Do you guys watching my channel, do you own dupes? Do you own fakes? Do you condemn them? Do you agree with them? Azir says, what about some of Chanel sneakers that look scarily similar to Nike sneakers? Well, Azir, that's a really interesting question Azir F is asking. But as you know, we've, have, we've had instances where high-end luxury brands like Hermes um, copy brands like Skechers, and Skechers sued Hermes. I think they settled out of court. I followed that case on my channel as well a few months ago. Skechers uh, won. They either settled out of court, in which case they didn't win, but that's kind of admittance of guilt, you know, if you settle out of court. And if they did go to court and win, basically, they claimed that Hermes copied their sneakers. Okay, then I went on a hunt to find the original version of those sneakers by Skechers. I did find them, I did buy them, and I did review them in a video. Uh, not so long ago. Go check out that video. And I still wear those sneakers to this day. They're very, very comfortable. And I prefer the Skechers version to the Hermes version, which I have also tried. They are not comfortable. The Skechers version is super comfortable. The Hermes version is just the fashion version of those sneakers, and they're not comfortable. So to answer your question, Azir, there are instances where a, another brand, like a sportive brand, like Skechers, can come after a luxury brand like Hermes and win or settle out of court. Now, whether or not Nike wants to come for Chanel, I don't know. If they want to, they can try. They have enough money, that's for sure. C says, Chanel is turning into a professional plaintiff. <laughs> In that so. In that so. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love and check out my Birkins at Walmart video also on my channel. Bye.